Douglas and McLeod, I'm going to be informing you on the Salton Sea. I'm going to tell you how, what, about the origin, how it began, the current state of the Salton Sea, and then role the, the role the Salton Sea plays in our environment. You guys all, you guys all have heard of Lake Kauia, right? Is it heard of Lake Kauia? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> the little man-made Lake Kauia over by, uh, over in Quinta over there. Well, actually, that's just, it got renamed after the ancient Lake Kauia, mm -hmm. which actually was flooded these, these valleys, the Coachella Valley, Mexico Valley, Imperial Valley, from the 1500s to the 1800s. <coughs> The Colorado River rechanneled approximately six times, which was the, the sole source of the water into the ancient Lake Huia. And in 1907, the Pacific Railroad used two th $3 million, 2,000 men, and 3,000 railroad cars to haul in timber, rocks, and gravel to finally get it blocked to stop, to stop the flooding. And it actually, which is what, what is now the Salton Sink. It's called the Salton Sink underneath the Salton Sea. And that's what formed the Salton Sea today. And although many believe that it was an engineering accident that caused the Salton Sea because they wanted to bring water down to the valley so that for agricultural purposes, it was actually just a natural occurrence when it rerouted it actually was actually a natural recurrence to come back down, and that's why they wanted to stop it before, because they knew it would flood the whole valley once again. So today we're left with the Salton Sea as it is right now. It's it's 35 miles long, 15 miles wide, and it has a surface area of 376 square miles. Hard to believe we got the California's biggest lake just a couple minutes away from where we all live. And hardly any of us probably ever been down there to look at it. And as you drive by, the Salton Sea actually looks like a, a beautiful lake until you start getting up close to it. And then you actually see what the real, the real Salton Sea is. <clears throat> its main source of water is agricultural runoff <coughs> from all the agriculture we have down south up here, it's just mostly, you know, all of our fruits and this and that. And when that agriculture water runs into the, the sea, it also brings a lot of salts from the from the ocean or from the desert floors, which can contributes to the salt that also is in the salt and sea today. Another source of, of water that runs into the salt and sea is actually uh, there's three rivers. There's the New River, the Alamo River, and a river from Mexicali that run in, and a lot of people say that that's where the pollutants come from. That is, that's where the pollutants come from, and the, and the Salton Sea is actually a toxic pit of dump. Well, it's actually not toxic at all. It gets tested twice a year, and it meets, the scientists say it meets clean drinking standards if it wasn't for all the salt. And when the new, new river from Mexico is the, the most polluted river in the United States, when that actually is coming down, it actually goes through a natural cleansing when it goes down the sea. When it goes down the river, it's called bioremediation. When it comes down, it's just kind of, kind of reminded me of like when you have the Brita filters and you pour your water in there. And it has to do with the carbon that runs through. That's what I got it from, so must work. That works. And although these sources these sources maintain the sea, they also pay, pay they contribute to the effects the sea has today. As then came the principal development, scientists of the Salton Salton Sea Authority puts it. The Salton Sea is not toxic, toxic at all as many people believe. And the biggest problems are the, like he, he states that the biggest problems are the salt levels. The salt levels in the sea, and it didn't help that the the, the, river, the Colorado River also is, is uh, salty, so when that came in there, 
that also play more effects to the salt in the sea. And it's a closed basin, so the salt doesn't have anywhere to go, the water doesn't go anywhere, it just kind of washes around in a closed basin, so it doesn't have nowhere to go. According to the saltandsea.gov, the salt in the sea is 25% more saltier than the ocean. And what causes the, the fish die-off? You guys probably all heard about the fish die-off down there. You've seen pictures of it. It's on the news. You see fish floating on the shore and in the water. It just looks horrible. The rotting and decomposing, decomposing of the fish calls, produces fossilism, which the birds eat, and that's how the birds get sick and die. That's what the environmentalists are pushing for. They're trying to get a plan going where they can help help that so it doesn't affect all the birds and have a massive bird die off. <clears throat> and the fish dies off from eutrophication. Eutrophication is when the fertilizers, when the fertilizers from the agricultural runoff go into the sea. It also makes the phytoplankton and the algae grow at an unalarming, almost unalarming rate. So there's massive amounts of food. So the fish just eat. It's like a buffet. The fish, the fish just keep eating, keep getting bigger, and then when the all the algae and the phytoplankton dies off, the fish or it actually eats up all the oxygen in the water, and then the fish actually suffocates. So that's what causes the die off. It's not some chemicals or toxic or anything. It's actually they lose oxygen. So it produces die-offs, and only a few survive, and then the same thing happens again the next year. They just keep eating. They keep eating and keep reproducing at alarming rates, and causes the fish die-off. And according to a survey in 1989, and that was a long time ago, but it's hard to dig up stuff on this place. No one's really interested in it. And Clara Jeffries, Harper's Magazine, it said that there was that half the people that once went down there to go do, like, for activities and stuff don't go down there anymore. They're scared to visit it. They're afraid to go near because they hear all the horror stories how it's toxic and it's a swamp. And actually, back in the 50s and 60s, the sea attracted many celebrities like Frank Sinatra, Desi Arnaz, the Beach Boys, Dwight Eisenhower. They all went down there. There was a PGA golf course down there at one time. And there was even a yacht club, imagine that. A yacht club at the Salton Sea. And due to a high, for a few years there they had a high precipitation amount, and the rain came in, and the agricultural runoff came in, and actually flooded the sea and flooded all the towns. So now it just, back then it was just abandoned like a ghost town. The, the effects that it has on the are the the way it, the way it plays an effect on our our uh, natural environment here is that the sunny the sunny boreal salt and sea wildlife refuge is rich in <coughs> biodiversity. There's countless species of birds and many, many endangered species. It's a crucial rest stop for the migratory birds migratory birds flying south for the winter. Although it's hard to believe that the milky, wa milky water lined with dead fish and the stench of stench radiance across the, the Costa Valley, the salt sea plays an important role and should be appreciated for its services. That's it. That's good.